This is a, a video about hash tables with separately linked lists. Uh, we're going to use as an example uh, the problem of uh, managing uh, accounts in a bank. So we have people coming in, Bill, Bob, Jim, and so on, and each one um, makes a deposit. And um, the problem is that we don't know uh, what are going to be the name of the people um, that that open deposits so um, we have to basically generate space for them in our data structure as uh, they come okay so initially when bill comes uh, you have to insert bill into the table and the second time bill comes then uh, you have to identify that bill was here before find the right record and add to the old number five the new number twelve to get the sum Okay, so how are we going to do that? So uh, first, um, the name Bill, Bob, Jim, um, we will refer to as the key. Okay, so that's the key that basically references uh, the account. And um, we're going to store um, all of these uh, elements in a hash table, which is a table with uh, six entries. And... Um, that uh, has basically a linked list starting from each entry. The other thing that we need is a hash function, um, which is um, a function that maps keys to entries in our table. Okay, so uh, let's look at an example. Consider the key bill. Um, bill here will be mapped into the entry 3 and the second time that we see Bill it will again be mapped into the entry 3 so Bill will live in this linked list starting at entry 3 okay so here is uh, how uh, we're set up uh, we have here the hash function uh, here is the list of people coming in and here is our table so um, first comes bill and uh, the hash function of bill is 3 as I said so um, so bill maybe maps to number 3 okay now we have Bob the hash function for Bob is 5 so we put Bob in entry 5 now we get Jim and uh, the hash function for Jim is also 5 so we map Jim to 5 we have to see that we now see that there is something already in five so we have to compare see that Jim is not Bob and so we are going to add Jim uh, to this linked list and we're going to add it um, at the end of the list just an arbitrary decision um, okay so next um, we have Tom Tom maps to five again and again we have it's Tom is not Bob Tom is not Jim and uh, we add Tom at the end. Next we have Bob. Bob maps to 5. Map Bob is Bob. Okay, so uh, that means that we need to combine this Bob 22 with Bob 2, update this record, and um, discard this old, this new one. Okay, so we now have this update. Okay, so similarly we can um, go and update each one of the entries. Okay, so that's uh, the state of the of this um, hash table uh, at the end. So this is not a very good hash table, and that's because too many elements are mapped to um, entry five. And so here we have a list whose length uh, l five is equal to uh, four. That's uh, a long list, and that would mean that we'll have to do long searches when we use this list. What we want is a hash function that creates lists uh, that are as short as possible, meaning that um, they're all of uh, more or less equal length. If we use a perfect hash function, uh, that maps the same um, number of keys to each table entry. That would be very nice to have. However, that is possible only if you know the keys before you st before you generate the hash function because for any fixed hash function there is a set of keys that will all be mapped into the same entry right and create a bad situation like this 
Okay, so um, uh, we're not going to use perfect hash functions, but uh, we're going to use random hash functions. So those are functions such that each key um, is mapped um, to a random number between 1 and 6. So we can think about it as tossing a random uh, die, a dice and uh, getting a number between 1 and 6. But uh, that is a problem because how um, would we recall the location of a key when we get the same um, the same key um, and a second time. So the solution that we use is that we have something that is what we call pseudo-random and in a different video I'll explain what that is but basically we'll have some very short seed that is really random that we choose uh, ahead of time and then um, using that seed uh, will generate the hash value for each key. Okay, so now that we're assuming that the uh, hash function is random, what can we say about the length uh, of the list? Um, so, um, well, there the quantities that uh, go into, into this analysis um, are uh, the number of uh, entries in the table, in our case it was six, and uh, the number of distinct keys. Um, and um, so these are the main two numbers. And what we have at each uh, time that we run the algorithm, we get uh, how long are each of the n lists. Okay, so these are the L1 to Ln here. Now what we know from definition is that um, uh, the sum of the Li is um, always equal to m. Okay, and so if we just um, uh, take expectation over that, then uh, m is always equal to the expected value of this uh, same sum and um, the expectation of the sum is always equal to the sum of the expectation. That's just called linearity of expectations. And uh, because of symmetry, because all of these uh, n entries um, are treated equally by the random hash function, uh, we know that all of these expected values must be the same. So this is just equal to n times the expected value. So if we take this n and move it to the other side, uh, we get this equation here, which makes sense. It basically says, uh, suppose we have um, a table with uh, six entries, and suppose we have 12 keys, then um, in expectation, we have two keys per entry. OK? That's uh, pretty uh, intuitive. And um, we call this ratio, the number of keys to the number of entries, um, the load factor and denoted by alpha. Okay, so um, so now that we have this uh, basic result, now we can analyze how long will it take for our algorithm to run. So um, what we what we basically want to look at is uh, how long does it take to do searches? And we have two kinds of search. So suppose first uh, that we consider a search that is not successful. Okay, so Sarah comes along, and um, Sarah is nowhere in the list, so we need to basically go through the list in order to identify that and then add Sarah right here. So, um, so how many um, links uh, do we have to pointers do we have to follow? Uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five. And that's basically exactly one more than the length of the list. So um, that means that we have to um, traverse the whole list and we get that the expected uh, length of uh, our search is 1 plus um, the expected length of the list, which is 1 plus alpha. OK, what about a successful search? A successful search is for something like uh, Jim, let's say. So for Jim, we just have to follow two pointers. And on average, we'll have to go through about half the list in order to find any element in the list. OK, so that's the expected value of the length of the list. And we basically get something very similar to what we got before. But in this case, instead of 1 plus the load factor, it's 1 plus half the load factor. 